Hi everyone, good evening and welcome back to week four of the Natural Grocers Live Keto Reset class series. If you haven't met me yet, my name is Erin Dahl and I am a registered dietitian as well as a senior nutrition education specialist here at Natural Grocers and I'm your host throughout our series. So we are so excited to have you join us for yet another great class this evening. And this week, our nutritional health coaches will be diving into keto hacks and providing tips and tricks to support your keto journey. So get excited. Um, but before we dive into our presentation this evening, if this is your first time joining us, first things first, welcome. We're so excited to have you. Um, but also just a few announcements before we begin. So there will be another live question and answer session immediately following our class today. So be sure to stick around for that if you'd like to have your questions answered. And if you'd like to submit a question, please feel free to do so in the YouTube chat pane provided. So of note, you do have to be watching the class on YouTube um, in order to be able to use that chat pane. Um, so if you're watching from the Natural Grocers website, there won't be a chat pane provided. So if you're on the website at Natural Grocers and you wanna go ahead and transition over to YouTube, all you have to do is just click on the title of the class which is located at the top of the video that you're watching and next to our Natural Grocers logo. Once you click on that class title, it'll automatically take you over to YouTube and you should be able to use that chat pane there. And then one last note, all questions will be held until the end and asked during our question and answer session. All right, so that's it for announcements. Let's go ahead and dive into our content. So guiding us through week four today, I have the pleasure of introducing you to Jane Bell, who is the NHC at our Denton, Texas store. Jane has a Bachelor of Science degree from Texas Tech University. She started taking an interest in nutrition when her own weight ballooned to an all-time high of 220 pounds. Seeking the root cause of her weight gain, Jane embarked on a journey that eventually led her to becoming a certified integrative health coach through the Institute of Integrative Nutrition. Since 2014, she's been coaching individuals in weight loss using her own 80 pound weight loss as an inspiration. She also coaches on food sensitivities, hormone support and nutritional supplementation, all starting with a whole foods foundation. Jane's passion regarding the importance of food to the body drives her continual desire to educate others. Jane, thank you so much for being here. We're so excited to hear from you this evening and please feel free to take it away. Erin, thank you so much for that lovely introduction. I really appreciate it. So while I'm sharing my screen here, I want to congratulate all of you for making it this far. Changing your lifestyle and changing your eating habits can be difficult, it can be overwhelming, but you've made it through four weeks of this. So pat yourself on the back, give yourself a big high five, and just know that you're doing fantastic. And I am so excited to be wrapping up this Keto Reset series tonight. I am a big, big fan of keto. As Erin mentioned, I had a really large weight loss. That was back in the year 2000. And I really used the Atkins diet back then to lose my weight. And over the last 20 years, I've transitioned into a keto slash primal lifestyle. So I cycle in and out of keto and primal, just like Mark Sisson talks about in our Keto Reset book that we've been going through over the last four weeks. And interestingly enough, you don't go through 20 years of a keto journey without encountering some speed bumps. So tonight, we're going to talk about some of those common speed bumps you might encounter and how you can overcome them. I'm a big believer in the phrase, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So with just a little bit of planning and some forethought, you can get through any and over any speed bumps you might encounter. So let's just dive in and get started. I'm gonna start by reading this disclaimer. This class is not intended to diagnose, treat, or mitigate any disease. 
Dietary supplements and foods can interact with prescription medications. If you are taking a prescription medication, become informed about the possible interactions. So now that we've got that out of the way, here's a small overview of what we're gonna cover tonight. So anyone that transitions into keto can run into these really common issues. And we see these over and over again. But interestingly enough, there are three solutions that can work for all of those issues that we're gonna discuss tonight. So we'll talk about those and then we'll give you some ideas for traveling, eating out, and some tips for budgeting. So we talked, I mentioned speed bumps a couple of times, so let's just discuss what those are. So on your screen, on the left-hand side in the white box, those are the common keto speed bumps. And again, Natural Grocers has been teaching this series for uh, three years now, which is phenomenal. And we see these speed bumps very commonly. And Mark Sisson even talks about them in the book. So things like weight maintenance, is your weight where you want it to be? Any occasional headaches or occasional constipation or occasional trouble sleeping? Maybe you have low energy and fatigue or you're irritable. You know, maybe people aren't wanting to be around you right now. Uh, you could have some hunger and bloating, occasional aches and pains and elevated blood sugar. So again, we'll talk about how we can work through all of these. But we want to make sure, though, that you know to consult your doctor for the conditions you see on the right-hand side of your screen in the purple box. And these are things like heart palpitations, autoimmune flare-up, severe muscle pain, skip periods or other women's hormones disruption, and then adrenal and or thyroid issues. And as an FYI, Oftentimes, adrenal and thyroid issues work hand in hand. So if you're experiencing one, make sure you discuss the other with your doctor as well. So now that we have these speed bumps and we know what there are, and I'm sure there's plenty of you that are kind of raising your hand going, yeah, I've done it or been through it. Let's talk about what we can do to overcome them. So the first solution that we're going to talk about tonight is water, electrolytes, and minerals. So water, 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 water. It is so precious to our bodies. Our bodies are mostly water. And I think most of us really know that we need to drink more water. At Natural Grocers, all of our nutritional health coaches can do one-on-one -on -one health coaching sessions with you. And when we do that, we'll ask you some questions about how you're currently eating. And we always ask about how much water are you drinking? And when I ask that question, I get the same, uh, you know, about 99% of the time, I'll get the same response. And it starts with this heavy sigh, and then the words, not enough. So again, I think we all know we've got to work on getting plenty of water in our bodies every day. The recommendation is that we start with half our body weight in ounces per, per day. So for instance, if you weigh 200 pounds, half of that is 100, that's the amount of ounces that you need in a daily basis. And I know it can be hard to kind of keep track of it. There's apps out there that can remind you to drink water. There's apps where you can track how much water that you're drinking. You might also do some uh, visual type things for yourself where you get a jug of water that's plastic or maybe a, a glass one and you fill it up with how much water that you need, but then you mark, like I'm gonna have this much gone by 10 a.m. and then I'm gonna have this much gone by noon and this much gone by two. And it just gives you that visual to help you track and know where you're at with your water. If you're one of those individuals who likes into you know, to use individual water glasses or water bottles, set all of them out so that you can see them. And again, it becomes that visual reminder that you've got to get through all of those before the day is over. And it really can go a long way to keeping water at the top of your mind because it can, water can make a huge difference in how you're feeling. So those speed bumps of occasional constipation, occasional tiredness, water, can really work on all of those. And along with water, 
we need to make sure that we're replacing our electrolytes and our minerals. So you may have heard of the term keto flu. So when you're first transitioning into a keto uh, lifestyle, when you go and you drop your carbohydrates, you could experience what they call the keto flu. And really, it's just kind of like what it sounds. It sounds like you, you feel like you have the flu. You're achy and tired and grumpy and just don't feel really good. But that's because you've lost electrolytes and minerals out of your body. In those first few days when you're going into ketosis, you're losing a lot of water weight. And so you've got to replace the water that your cells are losing. But along with it, you need to replace your electrolytes and minerals because those are also being released from your body in those early days, especially. So electrolytes, we've got uh, several different varieties here in our stores at Natural Grocers. We have some that are just straight up electrolytes and they're going to taste like it. They're going to have that mineral taste. And a lot of people don't mind that. Uh, if you're somebody who says, eh, not really for me, we've got electrolytes that are flavored. And of course, there'll never be any un in, uh, artificial flavorings colors or sweeteners in any of our products, and that's going to be the same for our electrolytes. And some of those electrolytes will have sugar, so you've got to make sure that you're reading labels like you learned a couple of weeks ago. And we've got some that have some uh, non-artificial sweeteners in there that aren't going to spike your blood sugar. So they're using some, some natural sweeteners. So take a look for those. And along with that, a lot of times those electrolytes are going to have your magnesium in there as well. But just make sure and again, read the labels so that you know that you're getting plenty of magnesium throughout your day. Magnesium is one of those minerals that our bodies need. A majority of Americans are deficient in magnesium. So it's something that you want to make sure that you're getting plenty of. Now, after we get through with this one solution here, we'll talk about the second solution. And this is tracking your diet more closely. So this can come in handy in a variety of scenarios. So if you're, this is really uh, important too, if your weight is not where you want it to be or moving in the right direction, tracking your diet and making some tweaks can make all the difference in the world. So the first bullet point you see here on the left hand side is tweaking those macronutrient ratios, watching your proteins and your carbs in particular. So last week we talked about what are those macronutrient ratios and how do you find them. And you may start out with some, a set of ratios, but it's not working as well as you want. So you might lower your carbs, you might up your protein or vice versa. Either one of those might work better for you. You are the best predictor of what works for your body. So know what works, but just work with it and tweak it and see if that makes any kind of a difference for you and where you're wanting to go. And then the second and third bullet points are kind of go hand in hand. Make sure you're getting out of quick calories, but on the other side, make sure you're not overdoing it. Now, when you're not getting enough calories or enough nutrients, your body can think that it's in starvation mode. So it may think that it is never going to eat again. So it's holding on to everything it has, and it's not going to release any of that excess fat that you're trying to lose with the keto diet. So if you're not getting enough calories, tracking can help you recognize that. So true confession time for you guys. So last, um, over the holidays, I overindulged just like a lot of us do. But I knew this session, this series was coming up. So after the first of the year, I went into my primal diet and I made sure that everything was really good there. And then when we kicked off this series, I wanted to go keto. And I was not getting the results that I wanted. So I took my own advice, imagine that, and started tracking my diet and what I was eating. And sure enough, I was not getting enough calories for the levels of activity that I was doing. So I improved that and worked on making sure I got enough. And lo and behold, now I'm going in the direction that I want. 
one of the beautiful things about being in a ketosis is that you really lose your appetite. So it can be really easy not to get enough calories. And I don't want to harp on that too much, but I just want you to understand the why behind that. So ketosis is that if you remember back to the very first lesson that we did, when we're in ketosis, we're, it's like we've got this big, huge log on our fire, which is our energy in our body. And it's just burning long and it doesn't take much refueling. And that's why we just tend to lose our appetite. Whereas if you're a sugar burner, which is the someone who's using carbohydrates to fuel your body, you're having to refuel those carbohydrates very often. And that's why you may have a bigger appetite when you're not in ketosis. And then again, making sure you're not overdoing it is the flip side of that. This is where you may, you know, I'm not sure this is a really huge deal all the time, but again, it's something to look at if you're not going where you want to go. So you can um, track what you're doing and make sure you're not overdoing it. And especially when you get down to those last five, 10, 15 pounds, that's when really looking at that calorie count can make a difference. There's all sorts of ways to track your diet. So there's trackers like chronometer. So that looks like chronometer, but it's pronounced chronometer. So it's a tracker that is really cool because it not only tracks your macronutrients of proteins, carbs, and fats, but it tracks your micronutrients as well. And your micronutrients are all those vitamins and minerals that we need to get out of our diet. So chronometer is really great for that. Carb Manager is a favorite tracker of mine. I use that. Uh, My Fitness Pal is another one. There's lots of them out there. If you guys have some you want to share with the audience, please put them in the chat pane. I know you guys have a lot of great uh, information as well. You can also just utilize, you know, a pen and paper to track your diet. Last week, we did provide you with a, a, an ability to look at writing down your diet. It was like a journal page where you can write down everything that you're eating, or you can just use a regular pen and paper. And then if you go into the book on page 157, that actually has a big list of foods that are keto friendly, and it will tell you the amount of carbs, fats, proteins, and calories, and all of those. So whichever way works for you, it's fine. Just track your diet because it can make a huge difference. There are studies that show that people that track their goals, whatever they are, are more likely to succeed at meeting those goals. So tracking can be a huge tool in your toolbox for keto. And then the last uh, bullet point here talks about testing and tracking your ketone levels. Now this mentions blood ketone levels. That happens to be Mark Sissons, the author of the book. That's his favorite way to do it. He claims it's the most accurate. And he, you know, there's all sorts of these blood ketone meters out there. They're much like a blood sugar meter, but they're tracking your ketones. I saw one for sale yesterday, about 40 bucks. So they're not that expensive, but the little testing strips can be about a dollar a piece. So that's one way to track. Another way is with breath ketone. Uh, there's a breath elizer basically that's testing for ketones. That's another way to do it. That one can be a little bit more expensive to buy initially, but then there's no strips to buy after that. And then there's also what we call these urine test strips that you can utilize. We carry these here in the store. And I like these, especially when you're just starting out on keto or if you haven't done keto before, these urine strips are pretty inexpensive and they can be very motivating. They turn this really dark purple color when you're in ketosis. So they can be very motivating to keep you on track, especially in the beginning. Now, Mark Sisson will talk about in the book how after your body starts adapting to utilizing ketones, those urine strips don't become as effective or as accurate because you're just not spilling out as many ketones in your urine. So just keep that in mind. 
and find out again which one works best for you. But knowing whether you're actually in ketosis or not can make a big difference for you as well. All right, so we covered the first solution. The second solution for these speed bumps, what is number three? Well, this happens to be my favorite because again, I'm a big believer in food. It, it just needs to be a whole foods foundation and it should change everything for us. It can make us really feel great or it can make us really feel sick depending on if we're eating some really bad food. The highest nutrient density foods can go a long way in making sure that we're as successful as we can be on our keto diet. So lots and lots of high fiber vegetables with lots of color. This beautiful slide here in the background shows all these vegetables with all this color. They're just absolutely beautiful. And those are the kind of things and colors that we need to be aiming to get into our diet every day. And Mark Sisson, he actually says that non-starchy vegetables and avocados do not have to be counted in your 50 grams of carbs a day. Or if you're even at 20, you really don't have to count the carbohydrates in non-starchy vegetables and avocados. He talks about how it takes so much energy to digest those types of foods that it's really a wash. So they're a free food. So eat those high fiber vegetables and really everything if you want to think about what is a non-starchy vegetable it's the things that grow above ground so broccoli and asparagus and bell peppers and tomatoes if it's growing above ground it's going to be a non-starchy vegetable you can also refer back to the natural grocer's meal wheel and there's a great list of all sorts of non-starchy or low starchy vegetables that you can utilize in your keto diet. The more vegetables for the better, guys. We need to load up on those. And you can also try switching up the fats that you're eating. So sometimes you might have some reactions to the dairy that you're eating, or maybe you just need a different fat profile. So maybe trying some coconut or avocados. Olives can be a great source of fats. Of course, your fatty fishes like uh, salmon and sardines and anchovies are really great fats to eat. So maybe try switching those up and see if that helps to get you where you want to go as well. And then the last suggestion here is to increase the variety of meats that you eat. So game meats like wild boar and elk have very different nutrient profiles than chicken and beef. So remember when I talked about if your body's not getting the nutrients that it needs, it's going to hold on to everything that it's got. So lots of high nutrient density foods can make all the difference in the world. I have to tell you, the wild boar that we carry is probably one of my favorite meats. So it's it harvested out of Texas. So I may be a little bit prejudiced here, but it is so delicious. Uh, it's a ground boar, and I will just make patties out of it that I eat open face. I'll pan fry them with some salt and pepper and some cumin, and then I'll top them with some chopped green chilies. And I'll eat that with that wild boar with the chopped green chilies and a big bowl of mashed cauliflower. It is one of my favorite meals, and it's so easy to make. I can usually have it done, and I'm sitting down eating within 30 minutes. So give it a try. It's very, very delicious. Now, we've talked about these top three solutions that are very common to help with all of our speed bumps, and I'm going to switch a little bit now to talk about how supplements can support us with these speed bumps that we're going through. There's a lot here on this slide. I'm not going to go through all of these, but I do encourage you to make sure and attend our your community support groups this week because we will talk about all of these and how they can support specific speed bumps. And we'll give you some documents on that so that can help you understand how to use supplements to support you as well. However, I am going to talk about two in particular tonight. So the first one is keto salts. 
And we've talked about this, I think, every class that we've done in this series. These are a big a thing that is in the keto community that can be very helpful. They're called exogenous ketones. And exogenous ketones are things that we take from outside the body and we put them in our body to help us with our keto journey. Or if you're not a keto dieter, you might be somebody who just likes the extra energy that it gives you because these ketones actually go straight to our liver and are utilized for energy just almost immediately. And our liver actually produces our own ketones during nutritional ketosis. And that's where we really want to always get is having our body producing those. But exogenous ketones can be a big boost to our, our keto diet. BHB is the ketone body that is most often what you're going to see in this supplemental form. And they are being supplemented in something called keto salts. So when you see that keto salts, that means it's often too going to have the potassium and the sodium and the magnesium that we're needing uh, to support our bodies as well. And again, these can be very helpful if we're transitioning into that ketogenic diet. So especially that keto flu, it can be helpful for, it can be helpful if you maybe overindulged in the carbs one night, uh, you can take these keto salts and they can get you back into ketosis and helping you get transitioned back into there. And again, even if you're not a keto diet, they could be very good for you as well with some extra energy. So ketone salts are something to really consider as a supplement as you're going through your journey. And the next supplement I want to talk about, these are probably some of my favorites, and they're called adaptogens. So adaptogens are these plants that are known to enhance our vitality by helping your body to adapt to physical, chemical, and environmental stress. How many of us here have stress in our lives? So I've got both hands raised. I know you can't see me, but you know, we've all got stress in our lives. So physical stress could be in the way of overworking. When you're working out, you overdo it. Um, maybe you get in a car wreck. God forbid that would happen. But something happens to you physically can be very stressful. A uh, chemical could be, you know, all of these, a lot of body care products have some really horrible chemicals in it that can be stressful to our body. Unless, of course, you buy them from natural grocers. Ours are really clean. But there's a lot out there that have some really terrible chemicals in them. And then, of course, environmental stress could be the air that you breathe, the water that you drink. It could be a, a stressful boss that's in your face each and every day. So these are uh, stresses that we all encounter. And we could uh, be encountering stress because of an event that we've experienced or an anniversary of an event that we've experienced. But adaptogens are huge in helping us our bodies to maintain a homeostasis and help us support normal, healthy stress levels. So these are just wonderful for getting us through those times. Now you can see here we have pictured a couple of different ones. We have ashwagandha, and that's a funny one to say, I know. So it's ashwagandha. And we have holy basil that's pictured here as well. There's some others like ginseng and rhodiola. And there's also others that have combinations of all of those or combinations of one or two or three. If you're not sure which one would be best for you, reach out to your nutritional health coach at your local store. She'd be glad to, or he would be glad to help you. And or the vitamins manager could go a long way in helping you choose which one would be best for you as well. So adaptogens, again, are one of my favorites. If you're experiencing a lot of stress, make sure and check these out to see if they can help you with that. So now that we've talked about those top three solutions, we've talked about some supplements, we're going to change gear just a little bit. And I'm going to talk about tips for traveling and eating out. And I think this is where you really have to plan and prepare, because if you don't, it just gets too easy when you're, you know, out and about or you're at a restaurant and, you know, and you want to eat because you're so hungry. It's just too easy to make a wrong choice, because when we are out and about and we 
get hungry. It's super easy to go through that drive through. It's super easy to walk by a table and go, wow, that plate of pasta looks really good. I want to eat that. So you really have to plan for these kinds of situations. When you're traveling, you can do things like bring your own food in a small cooler. Now, I want to really hammer the this point home that you should always, always, always have keto friendly food with you at all times. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a small cooler with a meal in it. Have snacks with you as well. So just anything that kind of helps you get through that hunger or you know event that you might experience when you're out and about and not at home. So get some snacks, you know, nuts and seeds or bars that you can put into your glove box. You can put it into your purse, into your pocket, into your toolbox, into your desk at work. Just always, always, always have keto friendly food with you. What happens, guys, is if you make that decision and decide that you're going to eat something that's not on plan, it's typically going to have a lot of carbohydrates in it. And if you remember back to the blood sugar roller coaster, which we also talked about in week one, when you eat a lot of carbohydrates, your blood sugar goes real high. And what goes up must come down. So when that blood sugar comes down, that's when the cravings will kick in. And your body is physiologically craving something and the willpower will just go right out the window. But if you have your food with you, you can make the right choice and it will keep you off of that blood sugar roller coaster. You can also consider fasting if you're traveling. So Mark Sisson talks about when he's on a plane, he'll just fast. That's something you can certainly do. I also read a really good travel tip last year uh, from Chris Cresser, who talked about if you are traveling, especially by car, when instead of just pulling over to the nearest convenience store and getting food that might not be the highest quality that you want, look on your, your maps and find a local grocery store. Search out your local natural grocers where you're traveling and just go five or ten minutes off the beaten path and go into a store where you know you can get some good quality food. And I just thought that was a brilliant idea. So I love that. When you go out to eat at restaurants, do things like look at vegetable sides on the menu first. That way you know where you can make some substitutions. So here in Texas, we eat a lot of Mexican food and there are, you know, half the plate is rice and beans. So I always substitute some grilled vegetables for those rice and beans because Mexican food is my favorite. <laughs> Just, I love it. When I go out to eat, that's where I'm going. So I'll substitute some vegetables for my rice and beans, and it makes all the difference in the world. And these days, you know, waiters and cook staff, they are used to people asking for substitutions. So if you're asking for a bunless burger or hold the croutons, they're used to doing this. They know that there's a lot of people out there that have different diet plans and diet sensitivities and food allergies. So again, it's just not that big of a deal. The other thing that I like to recommend when you go out to eat at a restaurant is to look at the menu before you go and decide what you're going to eat when you walk into that restaurant. So when you're walking in, you know what you're going to eat so you can just use your tunnel vision to get to your table because you've already made your mind up about what you're going to eat. Otherwise, like I said, it's just too easy to walk by that table of pasta and go, oh, man, I haven't had pasta in two months. I've got to do that. Or you walk by another table and they've got a big old piece of cake there and you're like, oh, I cannot pass that up. You know, that it happens, right? You guys know it happens. But if you've decided before you go, it just makes that so much easier to stick to when you get there. So look at the menu, plan out what you're going to eat before you go. Now, when you're going to parties or eating at other people's home, there's a few things that you can do there. So you can consider eating before you go. I think this is really important, especially if you're going to go to a place where you know there's going to be like a large buffet or a large, you know, um, 
potluck where there's just tons of food and it's hard to resist, if you're full before you walk in and see all that, it makes it so much easier for you to turn down the stuff that you know you shouldn't be eating. Another thing I'd like to suggest you do is drink some water on the way. And this is on the way to the restaurant or on the way to the party or on the way to somebody's house. Oftentimes when we are dehydrated, our thirst can be masqueraded as hunger. So we may think we're hungry when in act actuality, we're just really thirsty. So drink a glass of water on the way. That'll fill you up as well and take off that edge so that you're more prepared when you see the food that's gonna be laid out in front of you. And always consider bringing your own keto-friendly options to share. This is especially great if you anticipate dessert or drinks. And again, don't be you know, embarrassed about bringing stuff that works for you. I'll tell you guys a quick story about traveling. So several years ago, I was going to visit some friends and I was gonna be there for three days and I was so excited to be visiting with them. And I called up the hostess and I'm like, you know, what about food? What can I bring? I wanna do my part, you know, and I am concerned about, I didn't tell her this way, but I, in my mind, I'm like, I am concerned about what I wanna eat. I did tell her that, you know, I eat a lot of vegetables and really good high quality protein. And she's like, we got you covered. Don't worry about it, just come on. And I did. There was a little part of me that was saying, oh, I should probably bring something anyway, but I didn't. Well, guys, I didn't see a single vegetable for three days. I mean, I was sneaking out at night and going to convenience stores and buying salads so that I could just have some greens in my diet over those three days. And from that point forward, I just, I never go anywhere without having keto friendly food with me. Now I will say probably the one exception is when I go to visit my mom, I'm gonna go eat her delicious food that she makes for me. So there are exceptions to that rule, but in general, I always make sure I have the right foods with me. So since that's so important, I wanna give you guys some inspiration of foods that you can have with you and use as snacks. So these are some wonderful things. It's a huge list here. But I'll point out a couple of things like the mixed nuts or even just nuts and seeds can be really great. Uh, make sure not to really, and it depends on how many carbs that you can tolerate, but cashews and pistachios tend to be higher in carbohydrates and most people can't do that on a keto diet. And here at Natural Grocers, we have these snack pack of nuts and seeds. that are just perfect little sizes to throw into your purse, into your glove box, into your toolbox. So make sure and check those out because those are very helpful to, to uh, have with you all the time. But look at some of these others that would be great things to take to parties. So mix veggies with guacamole, flax crackers with goat gouda and red peppers. So there's lots of great uh, suggestions here. On the right hand side in the middle, you'll see boiled eggs with salt. So boiled eggs, I think you can get just about anywhere today. So you can get them at convenience stores. Again, they may not be the quality that you want. Uh, so we have them here at Natural Grocers in our grab and go section, or you can boil a dozen eggs at a time and put them in the refrigerator. So you have your own grab and go section. So lots of different suggestions here. If you've got some, I know, again, we have a wonderful community of Keto's people out here. Throw your ideas in the chat and let us know what your inspiration is for snacks and food to take to parties. And I hope that inspires all of you. So I'm going to finish this up with tips for budgeting. Now, I've had people tell me that they think keto is expensive and I get that I you know I understand we all need to be watching our dollars these days and I, but the thing about it is is keto is not as expensive as comparing yourself to being sick I mean if you've ever been really sick you know that's expensive as well 
when I was 220 pounds, I was going from doctor to doctor to doctor to try to help me because I had no energy and I couldn't sleep and I was depressed and just life was miserable. And every doctor I saw wanted to put me on a different pill. Now, can you imagine being on four or five different pills for the last 20 years and having to see the doctor every six months to get those refilled? It would be extremely expensive. So I'm so glad that I found this way of eating so that I could heal my body with real whole foods. So again, I get it, guys. Here's some tips to help you along the way. So eggs, we've talked about those. They're an excellent, low-cost source of quality protein. They're, one, they're just a beautiful, beautiful protein, and they're very low cost. And again, these, you know, you can make up batches of them at a time. So if you make egg muffins, they actually freeze very well. So make a dozen egg muffins and sort them into two or three at a time for serving sizes and throw them in the freezer. So you've always got something you can, again, grab and go. Uh, cabbage, how many of you ever... When's the last time you sliced up a cabbage? It makes a huge portions and huge uh, bowls of cabbage. So it's really low cost, lots of high fiber and goes such a long, long way. Recently, I had a cabbage dish that was like a saute cabbage with some cream sauce. It was absolutely delicious. And I'll be including that in my keto diet much more. Here at Natural Grocers, when our meats get to their freeze or sell by date, we actually mark those down and then we'll put them in the freezer. So look for those. If you're not sure where to find them, just ask any of our Good For You crew. They'll be more than happy to show you where those things reside. And then make your own stock. So I get a chicken, a whole chicken, and I'll cook it and eat off of it right when it comes out of the oven. And then after it cools down, I'll use it to make other recipes. So that goes a long way and will really stretch my dollar. And then I make stock out of that chicken carcass. And you can make some beautiful soups out of that homemade stock. Add a lot of low carb vegetables and you've really stretched your, your dollar here with this one. You can also use that homemade stock to make some good sauces to go on top of any proteins that you're making. So those are tips for budget, and I'm just going to wrap my portion up here with talking about some resources for you guys, some additional resources available in our store. Here you see a list of books that we carry. Keto for Life is Mark Sisson's latest book, and this is a book that really focuses on using the keto diet for longevity. But he really talks in this book that this is for people that are really dialed into the keto lifestyle. Or if you're struggling with it a little bit, he gives some great tips and tricks. But he really wants you to be fat adapted, sleeping well, exercising properly, all of those things that we've talked about, managing our stress. And he utilizes this book to help you just take all of that to the next level. So make sure and check out our book department in our stores. There's so many good resources for you guys available. And that's all for my portion tonight. I'm going to turn it back over to Erin, and she's going to talk about our keto community support groups. Erin, it's over to you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jane. Um, I think everyone in the chat pane really appreciated all the ideas that you shared for um, different snacks and, and meal ideas. There's a great conversation going on about food. I think everyone's super hungry. Um, <laughs> so probably going to make a great keto friendly meal after this. And then we're also talking about goats again. We just love talking about goats throughout this series. So it's making me want to get goats. Um, but yeah, yeah, again, awesome job. Um, before we head to the question and answer uh, session this evening, just a reminder that following the live class today, you do have the opportunity to attend one of our local community support sessions. So for those of you already attending these sessions, um, we hope you're enjoying them um, and finding them to be an invaluable resource and just a great opportunity for you to connect online with a keto community and also a local nutritional health coach. So if you haven't already attended a support session and you would like to 
to, there is just one note that there is a separate sign up for these support sessions on our website, and you do have to sign up beforehand in order to be able to attend one of those sessions. Um, so to make it easier for you, someone from our admin team will be dropping a link in the YouTube chat pane. Um, so you can just click on that. It'll take you to the website so you can sign up and then you can attend one of those support sessions and we highly recommend them. Okay, so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and transition to our question and answer session. Um, so I'll have all of my panelists go ahead and, and turn your cameras on. Um, and as I introduce you, just give the audience a wave so they can put um, a face to the name. Um, so you know, as always, we've got a brilliant panel for you this evening. Of course, we have Jane Bell, who is the NHC at our Denton, Texas store. Next, we have Michelle Brown, who is the NHC at our Topeka, Kansas store. Michelle graduated from Emporia State University in Emporia, Kansas, with a Bachelor of Science degree in biology, and later went on to obtain her certification as a certified transformational nutrition coach from the Institute of Transformational Nutrition. Michelle is also the best-selling author of Energy Reset, Remove the Toxins, Reset Your Hormones, Restore Your Energy, and she's been with Natural Grocers for over three years. So thanks so much for joining us, Michelle. And then finally, we've got Sarah Corrali, and she's the NHC at our Wichita, Kansas store. Sarah graduated summa cum laude from the University of New Mexico with a Bachelor of Science in Nutrition and Dietetics, and she's been with Natural Grocers for almost four years. She is passionate about advocating for high quality food and utilizes an individualized holistic approach when offering nutritional advice. In her spare time, Sarah enjoys cooking, dancing, video games, and spending time with her husband and their very large cat. <laughs> um, so thank you so much, Jane, Michelle, and Sarah for supporting with this question panel this evening. Let's go ahead and get to our first question. Um, so I think everyone's typing in right now, so we'll start off with this one. Um, what are some of your favorite keto-friendly products um, that natural grocers offers for those individuals who both maybe have on the go lifestyles, but um, also are trying to stick within a budget. Any rec product recommendations? Yeah, go ahead, Michelle. Yeah, um, we have so many great keto products available now. And some of my favorite for those that are on the go would be um, the Primal Kitchen uh, frozen meals. Those are some of my favorite for quick, easy things. I also love macadamia nuts for snacks. Um, and then for budget conscious, I like to just grab some of the frozen um, cauliflower rice that we have on hand and really just all frozen veggies, I think are a good um, kind of budget friendly option as well. Yeah, I totally have to agree with you on the Primal Kitchen frozen meals. They just have super clean ingredients and when you're in a pinch, they are awesome. So I love those recommendations. Any other thoughts, um, Sarah or Jane? Yeah, go ahead, Jane. So we have this new product called Boo Bites, and it's B-H-U. And they have a chocolate chip one that is just absolutely to die for. So chocolate chip cookies are like my nemesis. And it's, you know, it will get me every single time. So I always have something that I can eat instead of a chocolate chip cookie. And those Boo Bites are just absolutely delicious. And that's what I use and have in my purse all the time. <laughs> yeah, especially if they're hot and gooey, you almost can't yeah. resist them. But uh, I think this definitely sounds like a great product to try. So thanks for adding that one in. Go ahead, Sarah. Yeah, so I definitely agree with um, both Michelle and Jane, especially with the macadamia nuts. Those are amazing. We have the macadamia nuts in our natural grocers bulk section too, so it is a little bit better priced that way. And I did want to mention a really good magnesium supplement that is great for both budget friendly and um, it's travel friendly too because they're capsules, so you just need a little water to take them. But the Natural Vitality Magnesium Glycinate, um, it also contains some lavender and lemon balm. So this is a really good magnesium for promoting relaxation and for stress support. 
it is really well priced. I think it's like $12 and some change for 60 capsules or so. So for a magnesium glycinate, which is a really highly absorbable form and perfect for a keto lifestyle, that one is my favorite choice. Yeah, when you said lavender and lemon balm, that just sounded lovely. So I'm definitely going to have to try that now. <laughs> well, thank you so much for input on that. Um, this next one's a, a really good question that we got from a few individuals. Uh, they mentioned that they uh, lost a lot of weight in the beginning or when they were doing keto, keto they stayed at their goal weight. Um, but now later on, they've realized they've kind of reached a plateau or they've actually found themselves gaining weight. Um, do you have any suggestions or tips for them? Yeah, go ahead, Sarah. So plateaus can definitely be frustrating. I always recommend that anybody dealing with a plateau look at their lifestyle factors. So stress, sleep, and exercise. Really looking back and being honest with yourself and asking, are you, get enough, are you getting enough sleep? Are you managing stress effectively? And are you getting that kind of Goldilocks zone of exercise? So we want not too much and not too little. We want to stay active. I think a lot of people may fall a little short in either the sleep or the stress aspects. So um, if you need a little extra help with managing that, you can look to supplements, especially those adaptogenic herbs. Those are excellent for adrenal support and stress support, um, also thyroid support too, um, and making sure that you are getting your night's sleep. So going back to those week two tips and tricks can be really helpful for um, managing weight effectively. Other than that, looking back at your macros, you might have to go back and plug your foods into a tracker one more time to really see if you are meeting your daily calories, if you're uh, getting enough fat while staying within your protein and carb limits too. I think those are all great points. I know I definitely um, don't do super well in this area of stress, <laughs> if I'm being honest. And, and that's one area where, you know, you as nutritional health coaches can really work with customers and help look at both diet, but also those lifestyle factors that are so, so important. Um, any other thoughts on that one while I get the next one ready? Yeah, go ahead, Jane. So I, I agree with everything that she and Sarah said, and I want to add maybe some things to keep you motivated while you're on a plateau because sometimes it just takes your body some time to adjust so if you haven't already measure 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 because you might find that your body is actually shrinking but the weight on the scale is not moving just yet just sometimes takes your body time to catch up so measure so that you can know whether that's moving, so that can keep you motivated. And then look for other non-scale victories. So NSVs is what they're called. So these might be things like you're sleeping better, or you can get out of bed without your joints all creaking and moaning, <laughs> you know, being very difficult. So all of these little things can make a huge difference. And I also want to suggest that you guys journal right now about all of the symptoms that you're experiencing in your life. So again, it could be you can't sleep, um, your clothes are tight, you're angry or hungry or hangry all the time. Uh, just anything that you know, you're know you noticing about your life right now that you're not happy with, write those down because six months from now, when you're at that plateau, you can look back at your list and you go, wow, I've made a lot of progress and in places other than just weight. And that can keep you motivated to keep going. I distinctly remember that, you know, when I was at my heaviest, I couldn't wear shoes that tied because I couldn't reach them. So I distinctly remember the day when I could put on my shoes and tie them. And it was one of the most exciting days I've ever had. But you've got to write this stuff down because we humans forget we our brains trying to protect us from all of that stuff that was so bad so write it down so that you can go back and revisit that when you're going through a plateau yeah i think i just love that you pointed out those non-scale victories i i think that's just so 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 important to recognize and um, i really appreciate you adding in your personal story there as well that's huge and amazing yeah go ahead michelle I do have a couple things to add, and I definitely agree with Sarah starting out and making sure you've dialed in those lifestyle pieces, you've uh, dialed in your macros. 
Um, but there are a couple of other strategies you can try as well. Um, we carry a book called Keto for Women by Leanne Vogel, and she has some great solutions in there as well. She recommends increasing your fat intake by 5% uh, for seven days and then just kind of increasing it every seven days. Um, so that's an option. Another, what I kind of think of as a little bit of an advanced strategy, but if, again, you've kind of dialed in you know, your diet, your macros, your sleep, and all those pieces, you can try something called protein cycling. Uh, where you have a day each week where you reduce your protein to 50 grams or less. And again, that's a little bit more of an advanced strategy, but a lot of people do find success with that. She does talk about it in the Keto for Women book. Um, so that might be something to try if you have kind of tried everything else and it doesn't seem to be working. Yeah, that's a great tip um, and a great little pearl for everyone. And I love that book. So I also highly recommend that one. Um, okay, so this one we're going to talk a little bit about macros and kind of calories as well. We've got two questions on that. Um, so this first one is how long should you stick with the same macros before you tweak them? Any thoughts on that one? Go ahead, Michelle. Uh, well, I think it goes back to what I just mentioned, um, like uh, Leanne Vogel in her book, Keto for Women, uh, recommends uh, sticking with it for uh, seven days uh, and then increasing by 5%, uh, your fat intake by 5% every seven days. Um, and again, she kind of walks you through that in the book. So I really recommend that book for women doing keto. But um, I think just every seven days, you know, adjusting um, but be open-minded. Don't, you know, stress out if things aren't moving as fast as you want. Um, you know, give it some time. Yeah, I think that's a great point to point out is just, yeah, it's an adjustment for your body. So give yourself some time um, for your body to make those adjustments. So I appreciate that. Any other thoughts on that one? All right. So this one's... Um, more towards calories and, and also from a female perspective. So they're asking, asking what's the recommended amount of calories for a normal adult female body? Sarah, go ahead. So what constitutes a normal adult female can still vary very widely. So it depends on how tall you are, what your current weight is, so in general, you're going to want to either plug your own um, um, your own metrics into a tracker like chronometer, or we actually have a really useful worksheet that we use with our week three keto community support classes. It's called the keto calculations worksheet, where you just go through and you determine your macros and you also determine your basal metabolic rate. So that involves a little bit of some, uh, it's actually really simple math. It, it guides you along pretty easily. If you're interested in getting that sheet, just reach out to your local natural grocers and um, we can have that printed off or emailed if you need it. But otherwise you can check out a um, basal metabolic rate calculator off of Google too. And you can get a general um, recommendation for daily calories that you need every single day just for your normal me metabolic rate. And then you can work from there. Awesome. Thanks so much for adding that in there. You're right. It is going to vary depending on so many different things. And I think you provided a lot of really great resources for people to kind of figure that out and fine tune it for themselves. Um, so this one's, these questions are more towards food. Um, so there was a good question on inulin. Uh, so is inulin a good fiber supplement on keto? Sarah, go ahead. I like the, to take the digestive questions. <laughs> um, so inulin can be great. It's a prebiotic fiber. So prebiotics essentially help to feed your probiotic or your good bacteria in your gut to support the microbiome. Inulin can be great when added uh, slowly and consistent, consistently. It can cause some digestive upset if you're not used to it. So a little extra gas and bloating at first. Normally it levels out as you um, so you might need to work your way up to the full serving, but inulin would be a great keto-friendly fiber supplement. If you're somebody who's a little bit more on the digestive sensitive end, you may want to do something a little bit more of a softer soluble fiber supplement like acacia fiber um, or glucomannan would also be another option that's more on the soluble end. It just tends to be a little bit of a more gentle fiber to work with. 
yeah, that was a, a great, super well-rounded answer. And I, I love you providing those additional um, fiber options uh, as well at the end. Um, it's crazy to think that we're about out of time. Um, so we've got one minute left that just went so fast. Um, so I want to end with, you know, one last question that's kind of similar to what we did last week, but I think it's super, super helpful um, for everyone, which is what is one piece of advice or tip you would give for people as they continue on with their keto journey um, and after our, our four week series ends? Yeah, go ahead, Michelle, and then Jane, you can go next. Sure, I think that's a great question because obviously we want to keep going with this keto journey and I think one of the best things to do is um, just keep an open mind about everything and enjoy the journey. I know Mark Sisson talks about this in the book um, and just, you know, don't get too hung up on those numbers and, you know, whether or not you're losing weight, um, just re recognize how much better you're feeling. Um, like Jane was saying, noticing how much better your clothes fit. Um, and uh, my other tip would just be uh, to get out there and try some different recipes and really um, get some good cookbooks and uh, find some recipes you really enjoy because that will help you stay on your journey as well. Yeah, I love all of this. Jane, what do you have? So I would just like to suggest to be gentle on yourself. This is a journey, right? And one week you may not have the success you want and you may eat something that you shouldn't and you know it, but don't beat yourself up, right? You're human. It happens. So just be gentle on yourself and reach out for support. We need connection more than ever these days. So use your community support group. Uh, use your natural grocers nutritional health coach to give you some support. Find other people in, in your community that can support you as you go through this, because that can make all the difference in the world, just knowing somebody's there in your corner for you. Awesome. Thank you, Jane. Sarah, any last thoughts? Yeah, I agree with both uh, you guys. And also, um, you know, go buy a cookbook, get you know, inspiration from different keto websites. I think some people, especially when they're used to doing keto for a long time, they get stuck in a rut and they lose variety in their foods. You need to keep the variety going to keep your motivation and to try new foods and find new delicious options to stick with uh, your health goals. And also just have patience with your body. If you've lived a long time in poor metabolic health, it's going to take some time to restore that health. So give your body a chance to recover in a healthy way. Wow, all just really valuable information. So thank you so much, you guys, for for providing those amazing answers. Um, unfortunately, we are out of time this evening, so we're going to wrap up our questions um, and also conclude our live classes for this program. I, I can't believe the four weeks is already um, here and over, but I do want to say a big thank you to Jane for leading week four and teaching us all about some of the most important keto hacks and tips and tricks. Thank you to Michelle and Sarah for also helping out at the end there during the Q&A. Um, lastly, thank you to all of you who joined us throughout our four week Keto Reset program. We really hope that this turned out to be an invaluable program and resource for you. As you continue to navigate your keto journey, know that Natural Grocers is here to support you. Whether that be through free one-on-one -on -one nutritional health coaching or simply just stopping by the store and asking one of your questions to our very knowledgeable Good For You crew, we've got you covered. So that being said, thank you again for joining us. Have a great rest of your evening and stay healthy out there.